In a previous video, I covered the case of Deng Yuyao, which acclaimed director Jia Zhangke used in his 2013 crime anthology movie A Touch of Sin. The film's opening story was of a character called Da Hai, who felt cheated and frustrated by the corrupt officials in his village. Pushed to breaking point, he would go on a shooting spree, killing those he felt had wronged him in the past. And like in the Deng Yuyao case, the person the character Da Hai was based on would be seen as a hero by many after committing his crimes. He was seen as fighting back against the corruption of local, low-level government officials. In real life, the man Da Hai was based on was a native of Shanxi province called Hu Wenhai. The landlocked northern province of Shanxi is one of the leading producers of coal in the country, mining over 300 million metric tons annually. However, this along with a number of other heavy industries in the region has made Shanxi the most polluted province in the country. Hu Wenhai was born, raised and lived most of his life in a village named Da Yuko. During the Chinese reforms of the early 90s, to help the encouragement of developing the villagers' individual economy, the village offered a number of small open pit coal mines. Hu Wenhai saw a good opportunity and got contracted to one of the mines, effectively making him the private owner of the mine. The contract was supposed to be for three years, but he somehow managed to make it five years. This made him a lot of money, and one of the wealthiest families in the village. However, by 1998 his contract with the village was going to expire. Hu Gensheng, the village's branch secretary, a title which made him the government representative in the village, decided to open up the bidding. Hu Wenhai had tried to get a new contract privately at the same price as before. But other people in the village saw how successful he had been. Hu Gensheng rejected the offer Hu Wenhai made and eventually awarded the contract to another villager, Liu Haisheng, at a much higher price. This effectively meant Hu Wenhai had fallen from coal mine boss back to farmer and fermented a hatred for Hu Gensheng. Hu Wenhai started to investigate why the decision was made to make the bidding public and the mine itself. But Hu Wenhai wasn't the only person in the village to be investigating the mine under the management of Liu Haisheng. Jia Runquan was in charge of the town supply and marketing company, and he had noticed some issues with the production at the mine. While a lot of coal was being mined, Liu Haisheng had been underreporting the amount and defaulted on the payment of management fees. Jia Runquan was also confident that Liu Haisheng was avoiding paying tax. Jia Runquan, who was keeping a close eye on the accounts of the mine as part of his job was sure Liu Haisheng, and the village branch secretary Hu Gensheng were embezzling millions out of the mine. Being a longtime friend of Hu Wenhai, he shared the information. The pair went to the anti-corruption bureau in Jinzhong City with their suspicions. They claimed the mine hadn't paid taxes to the tune of 1 million RMB, about 150,000 US dollars. And a further 250,000 RMB in management fees was due. The complaint was sent to the taxation bureau who went to the village several times to investigate, but nothing happened. They would claim that they were unable to find any substantial evidence to support the claims of Hu Wenhai and Jia Runquan. The mine's boss Liu Haisheng would physically assault Jia Runquan for reporting him, and for some that was the end of the matter. However, for Hu Wenhai, it wasn't close to being over. He continued his own investigation into what was happening with the mine. Hu Wenhai suspected that investigators had been bribed by Liu Haisheng and the village branch secretary Hu Gensheng. Soon he was also physically assaulted by two brothers who lived in the village. An argument broke out between the two brothers and Hu Wenhai about watering their fields on the village allotments. The brothers beat Hu Wenhai to the ground and smashed his head with a metal shovel. Hu Wenhai required hospital treatment and 19 stitches for the injury to his head. The two brothers were not from the village, they were from Hebei province. They had moved to the village after their sister married a local man. After they assaulted Hu Wenhai, they left the area out of fear of retaliation. Hu Wenhai didn't believe they attacked him because of a dispute about watering fields. He was sure it was an attempt to scare him off investigating the mine, just as Liu Haisheng had done to Jia Runquan. A few days after being released from hospital, the village branch secretary, Hu Gensheng, approached Hu Wenhai to mediate discussions about compensation for the injuries between Hu Wenhai and the brother-in-law of the two brothers who attacked him. The brother-in-law, Li Lisheng, agreed to pay Hu Wenhai 20,000 RMB, close to 3,000 US dollars. Village branch secretary Hu Gensheng requested that since this was an in-village matter it should just be forgotten. Hu Wenhai was known around the village as a stubborn man with a quick temper, 
so usually people around the village tried not to provoke him. The two brothers being outsiders wouldn't have been aware of this. Also, since the brothers were foreigners to the village, there were no long-standing issues between the families. This caused Hu Wenhai to believe this was an attempt to assassinate him and he wasn't going to forget it. Hu Wenhai remembered a time in the past when Hu Gensheng would comment that no one in the village would dare sue him apart from Hu Wenhai. This caused Hu Wenhai to believe that Hu Gensheng was trying to get rid of him. Hu Wenhai started planning his revenge. He bought a fire axe, almost 4 kilos of explosives with detonators, two fake ID cards, and made an enemies list which had 45 names. When one of the brothers who attacked him returned to the village, Hu Wenhai beat him. Trying to find out who paid for what he saw as an attempt to kill him, the brother didn't give him any names. This only made Hu Wenhai believe that the man was scared of telling him who paid him for the attack. In his mind it must have been the village cadres who tried to get rid of him. However, in 2001 there was a chance that the first Hu Wenhai had for revenge could have been quenched. The contract for the mine was opened back up for bidders. Hu Wenhai made a bid to get it back. He was rejected and control of the mine would be returned to Liu Haisheng. At this time, Hu Wenhai managed to obtain some financial records from the mine relating to salaries of employees during the years of management by Liu Haisheng. The records showed that 5 million RMB had been embezzled out of the mine by Liu Haisheng, village branch secretary Hu Gensheng, and a second member of the village management. The brother-in-law of the two men who attacked Hu Wenhai, Li Li Sheng. He went round the village getting people to sign a petition for the issue to be investigated. 121 villagers would put their names down. With his evidence and the petition in hand Hu Wenhai went to the town authority to make report. However, nothing was done about the corruption going on. Undeterred he would go to the next level and report it to the county management. Again, after months of waiting there was no action being taken. The next step was to complain at the provincial level. And once again nothing was done. When Hu Wenhai tried to follow up he was fobbed off with excuses, such as a lack of funding or personnel to investigate. Hu Wenhai had lost all hope of anything being done about the corruption and money being stolen from the village. He went back to his idea of getting revenge and solve the problem his own way. He saw the corruption as a form of violence against the village, so he would fight violence with violence. On October 26, 2001, Hu Wenhai invited Hu Gensheng and the coal mine accountant Li Ji to his home. Hu Wenhai claimed the meeting was for mediation and reconciliation between them. Another villager Liu Hai Wang was to act as the mediator. At the meeting Hu Wenhai pulled out his double barrel shotgun and pointed it at the village branch secretary and mine accountant demanding they write a confession. The two men hesitated, not sure whether or not to take the threat seriously. Hu Wenhai shot the mine accountant Li Ji, killing him. He turned the gun on Hu Gensheng, but the shell was a dud. Hu Wenhai shouted for the mediator Liu Hai Wang to attack the village branch secretary with a fire axe. Liu Hai Wang swung and chopped Hu Hensheng down. Hu Gensheng was still alive and had the awareness to pretend he was dead. Liu Hai Wang, believing he had killed someone started to panic. Hu Wenhai gave him some money to allow him to go on the run. Hu Wenhai spent the next three hours walking around the village looking for the rest of the 45 names that were on his list. But before he left his home, he shot Hu Gensheng once in the back. The first target was the village chief, Zhang Jinglin. Once at his home, Hu Wenhai smashed a window open with the butt of the shotgun. Feng Junlian, the chief's wife, came out to see what happened. She was shot dead by Hu Wenhai. The couple's young daughter came out to investigate the noise. She too was gunned down and killed. Hu Wenhai discovered that his original target wasn't at home, so he moved on to another name on his list. Gao Yanshu was one of the brothers who had attacked him and put him in hospital. At the home, he shot Gao Yanshu in the back through a window. Not satisfied, Hu Wenhai walked into the house and shot the man again in the neck. His next targets were former village chief, Ji Jintang, and his wife, Hu La Di. The elderly couple were now running a small shop out of their home. Hu Wenhai smashed his way inside and gunned both down. The wife, Hu La Di, would survive her injuries while her husband died. In quick succession, he would then gun down the families of Hu Fulong and Hu Sanji, people who were related to him. His next target was the manager of the coal mine, 
Liu Haisheng. He found Liu Haisheng at home in the courtyard of his house and shot him twice in the back. Liu Haisheng never saw the shots coming. Seriously injured, he would later recover from his wounds. By now villagers had contacted the police but they wouldn't get there in time to prevent the next death. At the home of Li Li Sheng, the man who Hu Wenhai believed had paid the two brothers to kill him, Hu Wenhai fired his gun at whoever was opening the front door of the home. Li Li Sheng, his wife and daughter were all killed. Only the son survived by hiding under a bed. Hu Wenhai decided that the massacre was over and it was time for him to escape. He went home to collect the explosives, detonators and ID cards he obtained months before and rode his motorcycle to Taiyuan City. He wouldn't be on the run for long. In the early hours of the next morning he was stopped by police. He had ditched his motorcycle somewhere along the way and was in a taxi when the police caught up with him. He would make an attempt to blow himself up with the explosives but the police managed to subdue him in time. His massacre in the village had left 14 people dead and several wounded. The victims ranged in age from 71 to only 10 years old. During his detention and interrogation Hu Wenhai told police his only regret was that he was unable to wipe out the rest of the 45 names on his list. He was stunned to learn that two of the men he wanted dead the most, Hu Gensheng and Liu Haisheng, had both survived the attack. When asked why he killed so many people, Hu Wenhai would say he knew what his punishment would be if he was caught, so he might as well take the opportunity to punish anyone who had wronged him in the past. It could have even been for something trivial such as some crosswords being spoken. He never showed any remorse for any of his victims, except one of the young children he killed. He said he didn't feel sorry for killing the other child because in the future she might seek revenge on his family, so he needed to kill her. Despite his cold attitude towards his victims, it would be his actions at his sentencing that caused people, even today, to view him as something of an heroic figure. Only two months later he would stand trial alongside Liu Haiwang, the man who hit Hu Gensheng with the axe and his younger brother Hu Qinghai, who also played a part in the attack on Hu Gensheng. Hu Wenhai and Liu Haiwang were both sentenced to death. Hu Qinghai received the lighter punishment of life imprisonment. It would be for his passionate speech after sentencing that Hu Wenhai would be seen as a hero of the people by many. Hu Wenhai began his speech by arguing that the two men standing trial with him should not be punished so harshly, that he threatened and forced them to follow his orders. He then went into the speech that would earn him applause from the members of the public watching the trial in the courtroom. Hu Wenhai would say, I was born into a society and grew up under a red flag. I hope to become an honest and kind person. For this reason I continue to strive to realize my ideals. My character since childhood is to speak out. Dare to do it. The powerless people in the village lived in harmony with me and sometimes I became a spokesperson for their interests. He continued, in recent years successive village cadres have embezzled and paid bribes. Bullying the people and stealing more than 4 million RMB earned by the small coal mine in the village, where villagers work and risk their lives. In the past four years I have repeatedly reported this to the relevant departments but everything has sunk into the sea. The officials from public security, disciplinary inspection, provinces, cities and districts have shown us nothing but indifference. Where are we going to find reason? Who is in charge of us? I went to the public security organs to report the case and the civil servants who only earned small wages were driving cars worth over 300,000 RMB, showing off their arrogance. They didn't even care about handling the case, and even colluded with village cadres to oppress the people. I can only control violence with violence, and I can only defend the interests of the people myself. In fact my annual income is 40 to 50,000 RMB, I can afford to ignore these problems. My conscience tells me I cannot. I cannot ignore this. The government forces people to fight back, I can't let these mosques bully people anymore. I know I am going to die. If my death can attract the attention of officials and punish the corrupt I will die without regret. Otherwise, I will become a fierce ghost and never let them go. On January 25th, Hu Wenhai was executed by firing squad, leaving behind a complex legacy. An heroic figure to some, an insane psychopath to others. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video please consider like, subscribing, and commenting. And we hope to see you again for the next one.